Hi everyone, welcome to Gemchem. Now today's video is our new topic that is inorganic polymers and this particular topic is present in BSc second year syllabus. Now in the first video we are going to discuss generally what is inorganic polymers and few minute details. Okay, now let us start. Now what do we mean by inorganic polymers? Now basically Inorganic polymers are those polymers which are made up by inorganic materials. Now what are the inorganic elements which we know are present in inorganic polymers are like boron, silicon, nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur. Okay, these constitutes the inorganic polymers. Now we are going to deal with few inorganic polymers in details. So what are those? We will deal with silicones. Siloxanes, silicates, borazines, and phosphazines. Now, in this video, we are going to deal with silicones in short. So, from the next video, we will go into the details of silicone preparation, characteristics, properties, and different types of applications. Now, let us see what do we mean by silicones. Silicones are those polymers which are made by combination of silicon and oxygen, which constitutes the silicones. Now, it forms a polymer, that is, the structure is continuous, unending linkages are being observed. So, first, when we hear about silicon and oxygen, the first thing which we remind is SiO2, right? So, there is a mere difference between CO2 and SiO2. Now, if you see, this is a carbon and this is a silicon and both belongs to the same phase right so what is the difference between these two so this one particularly carbon dioxide belongs to the gaseous state whereas silicon oxide belongs to solid phase and this is existing as monomer and this is as polymer and it is not prone to hydrolysis that is there is no bond breakage whereas SiO2 is prone to hydrolysis and the next one is carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide has a molecular formula of CO2. Whereas this is the empirical formula. This is not the real formula. This is only a part of the formula. So it is empirical formula. We know that CO2 can be written as like this. But if we try to write SiO2 like this, this will be completely wrong. How it is wrong? Let us see. Now let us draw the structure. This is carbon, these are oxygen, oxygen. Now first we draw the hybridized orbitals. These are the hybridized orbitals present in oxygen. Here carbon dioxide has one hybridized orbital. So carbon has one, oxygen has one similarly here. And this bond is formed by two electrons present in these two orbitals. Similarly, there are unhybridized p orbitals present here and here also. And in the perpendicular plane, there is another orbital. Similarly, here in the perpendicular plane, another p orbital. Now, this bond formation particularly occurs. Let us see the bond formation. Here is one bond and here is another bond. So, there is one single bond for these two whereas double bond comes from this one now in case of SiO2 no pi overlap is possible this is due to the size of orbital of silicon lateral overlap between silicon Py and Pz with oxygen Py and Pz is impossible as the distance increases a lot now we will see the attempts of to forming the SiO2 so what is the structure of SiO2 let us see Now SiO2 is unending linkage. So if we consider one silicon here, it will be connected with O linkage to another silicon and this continues. Okay, just like this. Here also in this side, this continues. Here also in this side, it continues. Similarly, in this case, here also it continues and here also. If we try to draw the whole structure, then our copy and screen will be not sufficient for it to draw. 
Now, if you consider here, then if you see this one, you can see that it shares half oxygen. One silicon shares half oxygen. This oxygen is shared by this silicon as well as the silicon present above, right? Similarly, for this one also half oxygen, this one also half oxygen, and this one for also half oxygen, right? So, silicon, oxygen, silicon linkage are unending. And we have attempted to prepare these unending linkages. So how to prepare it? We need OH groups. That is such that these groups can be constructed using presence of OH groups. Now if you see this part, this is the SiO2. So how is it, is it SiO2? So if you see SiO4 and contribution of each is half. So it is equivalent to SiO2, right? Now we are seeing how to attempt to prepare these types of silicones. Let us see. Now, if you consider attempt to prepare silicones, then you have to remember that you have to form hydroxy silanes. Okay, so to attempt preparation, then we require something like this R SiCl3 which can give us R SiOH whole 3 and suppose two of them reacts then there will be formation of chains right similarly another type of chlorosilins can be taken like this and this can react to give this kind of thing so main starting material will be from these things that is which we are getting from RSiCl3 or R2SiCl2. Now details of this will be discussed in the next video. Here only introduction is being given. Now another one is RSiCl and it gives R3SiOH. Right. So we are getting hydroxy silanes in order to obtain the silicones. Now remember, in order to prepare cross-linked polymers, we require this one. That is first hydroxy silane is required to make cross-linked polymer. Okay. Similarly, the next one is used to prepare linear polymer or cyclic polymer. And this one, that is this particular thing, if we see very carefully then we can understand that there is only one place to react so it acts as a stopping agent of polymerization so it helps to stop polymerization remember it next during cyclic polymer formation it itself gets rounded and there is no need to add such kind of moiety that is, this is no need to add because it itself gets terminated. No other silane is required for termination. And remember, this can only undergo one type of reaction. Depending on the nature of R, it can be used for non-stick cookwares and additives in cosmetics and spacecrafts. So, we will discuss about this in later. Now, if we want to know what is seal oxen, right now we had dealt with only silicones. So what are siloxins? This is particularly known as siloxin. If this hydroxy silin is being reacted with another same thing, then there will be formation of R3 Si and remember what happens here. This particular one water molecule gets removed. So ultimately we get here 1O then Si R and this is known as siloxin. Okay, now we are going to deal with some different things which are important to know in case of inorganic polymers. Now, first question if you see, what is oxygen analog of urea? So, what is analog? What do we mean by analog? In order to get the analog, we need to know the elements. So, we know that hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, right? So, if we try to get analog of this, 
with respect to boron then we have to add one hydrogen so we can write it as boron with a hydrogen is equivalent to carbon similarly if we try to write oxygen then oxygen is equivalent to NH and again if we try to write for the next period elements then sulfur is analog of pH so as we move from here to here we are adding one hydrogen each similarly SH is the analog of chlorine SH is also analog of fluorine remember this one this is how we can get analogs so this is BH right so if we try to do the first question then oxygen analog of urea so what is urea let us write this is urea right if someone is telling you write the oxygen analog so you will replace one of the nitrogens and hydrogen with one oxygen we know that so it will look like this that is OH and OH so it is actually H2CO3 now if we consider for the next question that is chlorine analog of H2S so what will be this one if you see from here then you can understand HS H so this one can be replaced by Cl so HCl is our answer so this was the short general discussion on inorganic polymers hope this was helpful next video will come on silicones its preparation properties and applications so hope this was helpful thank you for watching don't forget to like share subscribe and comment